Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, vision craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Anne Ruthman, a creative business consultant and adventurous and a Reiki teacher. Now all those three things, of course, means she's incredibly good at all of them, right? Right. <laughs> um, I, I, she's got to be. Um, Anne and I go back many years, about 10 years, you'd say, Anne? What do you think? Yeah, at least. 10, at least. 15, 10 12 years. Uh, yeah. When we met, uh, I think it was through uh, an online forum called DWF, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you were photographing yeah. weddings at that time, and I was in awe of your lighting. I was like, how is she lighting oh. these photo f oh. folks on the dance floor? I was like, I, I didn't know how, you, how you were doing it. And then you very kindly explained to me uh, the whole idea of uh, turning your flash head behind you and pointing it to the left or the right or whatever it was, I was like, "Wow, you could do that!" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was very a nice, three-quarter lighting, three-quarter lighting. Exactly. I didn't know a whole lot about lighting back then, and you were so kind and generous to me back then. So we've connected and we've been in, uh, in touch with each other off and on for a lot, well, a number of years. Um, you have just launched, or you in the process of launching something really cool for creative people, photographers included, called the Pricing Workbook for Creatives. And it caught my attention because it's one of the things that as as creative entrepreneurs, if that's the way you want to describe yourselves, uh, we get all wrapped up and like stressed out about how what to price things, how to price things, what 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 is that person down the road charging for an eight by ten and I should charge two dollars more or two dollars less or whatever it is and we we get right I mean we are we we drive ourselves insane yeah and so this workbook does what for photographers so it really came out of like 15 years of experience um, in the photography industry and helping other creatives um, as I would share what I was working on or what my sales were or how things were, you know, successful, people would be like, well, how are you figuring that out? And I would write things on Photo Love Cat and I would be like, well, here's how I'm figuring this out and here's how I'm figuring that out. Um, but every time I would have like a consulting session with somebody and they came up with all those questions, like what a pricing, you know, I was like, okay, well, do you know this? And do you know that? And do you know that? And they're like, no. So I was like, okay, so we got to go back to square one. So that's really what, where the white, the pricing workbook came from. It was like, Hey guys, there are a few things you really need to know right up front before you start trying to put a price on your work. And that will help you both realize that your price should not be based on what other people are doing. And your price really needs to come from a place of understanding what you need and how you work and what's going to get your business as a successful business. So there's like three parts in the pricing workbook and it takes you from a place of not knowing anything. Like you could literally not know a thing about your market, your client, your, you could just be like, I like to take pictures or I like to paint, you know, portraits or I like to mm, wrangle unicorns. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Whatever your creative thing is. Um, so it takes you from that place of like, okay, well, what do I need to sustain myself as a creative mind? What is it that I need for myself? And then to a place of, well, what do I need for my creative tools? These creative tools, especially with digital tools, um, are both very expensive and need to be replaced frequently. And so the second worksheet is basically like how to frame that in a budget perspective and then how to prepare for the replacement and the constant upgrade cycle that we have to deal with. And then the third um, worksheet, this is just part one, is like how to plan for your business needs, the overhead, the um, accountant that you want because you don't, you're like racked by doing numbers and maybe you can get your accountant to help you do the numbers on this for a bookkeeper. It would be a bookkeeper that would help you with this. Sure. Um, or um, you know your insurance that's going to keep your equipment upgraded, and the liability insurance that you need to walk into any venue that asks you for a million dollars in liability. Um, so it it takes all those like really easy to figure out, easy to go shop for online numbers, puts them in a formula, and is like, hey, 
this is your baseline. Don't you dare charge less than this or else you're slitting your throat. And then it goes from that place of like, okay, here's basic sustainability to now let's distribute this over what you're actually going to do for people. Like, are you going to photograph them for an event? Are you going to photograph them for a wedding? Like, what is it going to be? How much time does it take you to do that? How much time does it take you to send marketing emails, to do your social media, to um, make phone calls, you know, whatever you need to do to just get those clients on board? And then how long does it take you to produce the work? And what does that work like? Um, and then how long does it take you to to deliver that work. So it really takes a look at like, okay, what's the time investment of every offering that you're putting out into the world? So when then we take part one and part two, and then we put it into, okay, well now you know what's sustainable. Let's add on the other costs that are involved, like, oh, your transportation and all that stuff. But then we also have to look at profit. If you're ever going to grow, if you're ever going to have an employee, if you're ever going to, you know, get your hassle blad that you've always loved and always wanted or your Leica or whatever it is, like, how can we factor that in to where you are now and what's sustainable in order to give you room to grow into the future? And so that's part three. Um, so I've had some people get through this first part in a day. And the second part in a day and then a little more time for part three. And I've had some people just take weeks and weeks and weeks. And so it really is, but it's all there. It's all in the book. Like you can get from, I know nothing to, I need to charge $500 for this session because of X, Y, and Z that I all outlined in the workbook. So that is what the book is. Well, that's a great description. <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask you all these questions now. Uh, and I, I was like, well, she's talking about every single section now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let, let me ask you this, though. I think once you figured out that number, whatever that is, I mean, do you recommend, uh, and I have only have the first seven pages of your workbook right now at the moment, um, do you recommend, though, after or during the workbook, uh, if once you figure out exactly what it is that you must charge, uh, for a session or for the for the day or whatever it is that you however you your business model is do you suggest uh, just going a little bit over that number so you're sort of putting you're setting aside a little bit for profit or is that your is that your profit number uh, how do you explain that in the workbook yeah so there's actually a lot of profit structure built into okay. the worksheet so um like there's savings built into the personal side there's savings built in, retirement built into the personal side there's savings built into the um the business um format there's the replacement cycle that i suggest mm -hmm. in for the equipment stuff also kind of builds in a a hidden savings account because you could get three years to five years out of your laptop even if it's only warranted for one or two years so by building in a cycle of replacement um, that honors warranties you actually build in a savings account with that um, in order to do replacements emergency repairs or even upgrades um, and then on the back end um, on the price profit and now I, I put all of that in as describing that not as profit. I put all of that in describing that as sustainability because that's literally what it is. Okay, like if you, right? Like if yeah. you, if you just want to sustain your business, um, you still have to plan for all these things, which will appear like profit to other, other pricing structures that have been created in the past. And this was one of the things that I felt like I really needed to create this book because I came from a business and a management and marketing um, background. I came from the business degree, which I didn't finish, but I started. <laughs> and as I tried to apply that common, or I would say 19th century industrial business advice onto a creative um, and service and product that takes a lot of time, I was like, this, these models don't work. These, these are, this is bad advice. Like. If you're just doing basic accounting, this is all bad advice and it's running people down the wrong road. So um, so that's why I created this because I was like, this is how creatives really need to think about it and look at it. Um, I would say, I think what you're getting to is like, should you sell more than? Absolutely, like once you get your foundation set, absolutely, charge whatever you want. 
But what I found is people thought they were in that place of like um, having a luxurious price. But once they did the numbers, they realized they were actually a little under sustainability. That's so scary. That's was... very scary, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> right? I, it's, yeah. so, it's sort of like your immediate thought of uh, those numbers is that, oh, I'm doing OK. But uh, your accountant will tell you at the end of the year that, you know what, honestly, you're underwater. You know, uh, you yeah. haven't you haven't made you haven't made the mark. You haven't you know you just are barely making it, probably. You know, and that's that's not the way to run a business. Uh, right, right. And so I'm like, if, if you once you understand sustainability, right, let's just get you to the place of understanding like what is sustainable. You could think you have a high price based on what your your sphere is telling you is affordable or not affordable, but once you look at sustainability and you're like oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like not even sustainable or I'm barely sustainable at this number. Um, then you can really like get your defenses together and be like, wow, this is actually like, I, I need to think this more through this more. Um, and I think a lot of photographers and a lot of creatives end up being in that position because you know, we start with the people who are around us. That's the people who we start selling to initially. And those people actually may not value creativity and may not value creative work and um, honestly they may not be able to afford you know what it takes for our business to be sustainable which is why we have to really understand that understand the sustainability and understand the growth what is it that it means what does it mean to grow um, in this business and what I found is that once you find the clients who really do value it really do um, value your creative work and you develop those long-term relationships with them, um, you are in a much better footing. You're in a much better place. Um, you can definitely carry your business forward, you know, decades into the future, but it does take first understanding, you know, what it means to have that long-term business and then being able to say no to people who don't want to pay you the sustainable numbers. Um, and I think that the book really helps people get that confidence that they don't have when everything's wishy-washy and they're like, well, all these other people are doing it this way or they all have this number around it. Well, that makes it harder for them to defend for themselves because they haven't actually like done the work. Uh, to that point, uh, I, I just heard on a webinar about what uh, uh, the market will bear and the conversation was such where uh, the presenter was talking about uh, serving the high-end market and then there is serving the middle market and then serving the lower market. And I think she was suggesting that not everybody can be at the high end right off the bat and that you need to sort of almost work up to it in a way uh, or, uh, you know, have two options for, you know, for your services where one is a high-end option where you, know, you are rolling out the red carpet and giving them, you know, the everything that you can. And then uh, the middle market would be whatever it is that, you know, the middle market is. But you mentioned that, you know, those categories are so different in different cities. So what would you suggest for a photographer? Like, how would you suggest a photographer define those for herself or himself? Does that make sense? Um, um, I, so like what the middle market is, what the low market is, or what their offering is at the low, the middle, the high. Because I do believe you can have a low, middle, and high once you know what is sustainable. And once you know what is sustainable, you can be like, oh, okay, well, if I'm going to have a low-end offering because I still want to sell in my local area and people here can't afford much, which is the case that I was in in Terre Haute, um, what is it that people can afford? And But when you know how much time it takes you to produce something, you also know, okay, well, I'm not gonna invest that much time in that thing that I'm gonna sell at a low price. So I can sell maybe this print reproduction that I can do in a run of 50 once in one hour. And that is that could be my $30 thing that anyone can buy, right? And they can buy it online or they can buy it when I do an art fair or a whatever. Um, and I can ship it to them and, you know, that will be my low, low, low end offering for people just to, you know, for me to satisfy that 
market. And it only took maybe, you know, an hour of your time. And if you're doing it smart in a way that can be automated, like maybe, you know, only a minute of your time to deliver, like click on a delivery. Um, and then, you know, once you know what your sustainable factor is and what your, um, what your, the middle of your market is in your local area, like, let's say, I've found that most people throughout the country can, in the middle range, afford something between $250, $500. And in that range, when you do the workbook, like when you do your numbers, when you do your time, you find out, okay, well, what can I actually offer in that range that's sustainable and profitable for me? So if if that means I can only invest, you know, like three to four hours in it in order for it to be sustainable and profitable, What's the thing that I can do in that amount of time? And I mean start to finish. I don't mean just show. I don't mean the part where you show up. I mean like start to finish. So I think that once you, you know, yeah, you can look around at like what looks like average, what 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 people respond to, but it's also a matter of putting it out there, right? Like you have to put it out there. You have to see who responds to it. You have to see um, what they can do. But when you know it's worth your time, to do it when you know that like you're not going to slit your wrist for doing it you're not going to put yourself in a bad spot or you're not going to be missing out on some bigger client by investing far too much time in a middle right. range offering right. um i think you just make smarter choices at that point awesome awesome it's uh, sort of this kind of thing that you're going to get out of the workbook uh my friends uh, i would recommend it uh, and i do recommend it uh because uh, number one it's uh, it comes from a place of experience. Uh, Ann Ruthman's been at this for about 15, 16 years. Uh, you know, she knows the business. She knows creatives and she works with creative people all the time. So here's what I suggest. Uh, I suggest you should take a look at uh, the offering. Where would they find uh, the pricing workbook for creatives, Ann? Um, you can go, it's actually available on Amazon. So okay, it's right. available by paperback or Kindle. I highly recommend the paperback because it is such a pain to like look at it electronically and not be able to like do the work right away. So it's far nicer to just like have the paperback and do the work as you go and like slip it in your backpack. It makes great padding against your laptop in your backpack. I gotta say I travel with it a lot. That's <laughs> <I> awesome. <laughs> at my laptop um so yeah it's on amazon pricing workbook for creatives um and i actually have a whole bunch of like website stuff happening right now behind the scenes i just posted on my blog how messy my online presence is so don't go to my online presence just go to amazon if you want okay. it and if you want to make money off of it um set yourself up with an amazon affiliate link and share that awesome <laughs> Well, thanks for having, uh, having making the time for uh, being here and talking about this very important topic, Anne. I really appreciate it. Um, I wish more people would listen to your advice, uh, make the commitment to work through this workbook. Uh, I've just ordered my copy, by the way, and uh, and I ha I paid for it, folks. Just letting you know, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not getting anything for free, and I'm not I'm not promoting this uh, for any other reason other than. I, other than I want more photographers to be profitable because they can make better art. You know, if you are stressed out about the money aspect of things, you're not going to be making art. You're going to be, be I'm, to be honest with you, you're going to be making crap. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I said it as it is. I mean, I just, I, I have to say it. I, I want people to go out there and make enough money not not millions of dollars if that's not if, if you could if you want to i mean you can yeah, yeah you nothing's no, no stop in you but the idea is you need to go out there and and make a living and a little bit more so then day after tomorrow or next year you can go out and buy a new camera or you can invest in more education or you can do something fun for your family whatever it is that you want to do you can do it now with your creative passion so Think about pricing as sort of like the cornerstone of your business. In, in a way, you, it's a lot of people start off with sales and marketing. You can't get to sales and marketing without good pricing. You can't. You just yeah. cannot. Yeah, if you're selling a bad thing or if you're selling something that's going to short you out at some point, like, oh, that's rough. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you spend a lot of time selling and not a lot of time working. <laughs> Indeed. 
Thanks, Ann. I appreciate you joining us today and Thank all the best you. in your future. I know you've got lots of travel coming up. So be well. Yes. Thank care. you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.